People often ask me, you know, when are robots going to take over the world? Aren't you worried about the robot uprising? And my answer is always, I'm not really that worried. Um, I mean, after spending a lot of time around the state of the art and with amazing roboticists who are super smart, none of them are really that worried either, right? These robots in sci-fi set these crazy high expectations about, you know, I'm gonna have Rosie clean my house. I'm gonna have the Terminator chasing me around. I'm like, really? Just like, go, go look at a robotics lab. <laughs> we're not there. But even if we did, it'd take a really long time. And we often seem to forget that, like, we're the ones designing these systems. Uh, we can do it thoughtfully. We can do it with our values baked into them, right? And we should, I think. Folks have said to me, well, I don't think robots should have emotions, right? And I tell them, sure, like it doesn't have emotions. It has states and it has goals and, you know, we give it goals. Those come from us, not from the robot itself. And I actually think that it can be useful for robots to at least express something like emotion because emotion at its most fundamental level is, you know, approach and avoidance. So positive, negative. And that all has to do with like me expressing to you what I'm trying to do. Right, so if I fail at a task and I look sad about it, it's actually communicating useful functional information to you. So there's all these pictures of puppies that happen to look like donuts. And the computer vision folks are trying to make sure that like, you know, the robots don't get the two confused because you do different things with donuts than you do with puppies. <laughs> this is why I'm not worried about the robot uprising. <laughs> like, if we can't tell the difference between those things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, robot uprising is not happening today.